Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Naval vessels serve a number of important missions. As mobile command units housing hundreds or even thousands of military personnel, they need to be able to move from one part of the world to another without constantly returning back to shore for fuel. But rather than set up floating fuel depots that might become targets for enemies, most navies have embraced a concept known as underway replenishment. This is not just standard Navy procedure for the delivery of fuel, however. But also all sorts of supplies, from food to weaponry to personnel. Normally what happens is when we bring things from one ship to the other, uh, we hook up our high line, then we hook up our surf block, then that connects our gold wing, which is what actually moves back and forth between our ship and the other ship, carrying uh, whatever supplies that we're taking on board. It lands on the ship, we drop it off. The process for transferring fuel requires a tanker vessel to pull up alongside the ship, being refueled. A series of cables and pulleys are then used to transfer a fuel hose between the two boats. Once it's attached, the tanker simply pumps fuel through the hose and into the tanks of the waiting ship. Though it sounds easy enough, it is a very delicate process. Any accidental detachment or rupture of the hose could end up pouring tens of thousands of gallons of fuel into the ocean, or even start a fire aboard the ship. Sometimes, ships are not the fastest, safest, or most effective way to deliver valuable cargo. In this case, vertical replenishment might be utilized. As the name implies, this BERT rep is a procedure when helicopters use powerful cargo hooks to very quickly deliver equipment to a boat. Since there are usually several helicopters working at once, and since they don't need to land, the process is incredibly quick. Most ships will employ vertical replenishment when dealing with precious cargo like weapons or sensitive electronics. But the helicopters can deliver almost anything if the seas are too rough for connected replenishment. At the end of the day, a ship that runs out of fuel can float and wait for a tanker to arrive and replenish them. The 
the same can't be said when it comes to aircraft. That's why air forces from multiple countries began working on aerial refueling techniques as early as the 1920s. The techniques have changed slightly over the past few decades, but the basic principle remains the same. A tanker craft will engage another airplane in midair, typically at a relatively high altitude. After matching speeds, a special operator will deploy a boom and guide it into a receptacle of the aircraft being refueled. Boom refueling, while effective, does have its hazards. After all, the boom can be broken off or damaged if either of the planes encounters turbulence. The probe and drogue, a refueling method standardized by NATO countries around the world in designing new aircraft, has proven equally effective. In this case, a flexible hose is dragged behind the tanker aircraft. It features a special basket, or drogue, at the back, which acts as a guiding funnel. This makes it easier for the plane to insert its probe into the fuel line. In 2015, the probe and drogue system was used in the first refueling of an unmanned plane, the X-47B. That was, it was within limits, 20027, and that was at uh, time 55, so it's, it's staying pretty strong. It may go over again. Still, in the world of air-to-air -air refueling, no vehicle poses more problems than the helicopter. Despite being prized for their versatility and vertical takeoff and landing capabilities, helicopters have dangerous high-speed rotors that could easily sever a refueling line, leading to an accident. So, in order to keep helicopters aloft for long periods of time while minimizing the chance of incident, engineers invented special extra-long fuel probes. Rather than put them on the top of the aircraft, near the rotors, the probes extend straight out from the front and can be retracted whenever not in use. Combined with the drogue system, a plane can refuel a helicopter while keeping the line as far away from any moving parts as possible. Pilots also get a much clearer view of the probe, allowing for faster coupling and decoupling. Today we have the opportunity to uh, go air do air refueling with Komatsu Air Rescue Squadron out of Japan. Uh, they're going to come down and meet us on the air refueling track. And that's going to give us the opportunity to uh, they come up behind us, 
hook up with us and get some gas passed from our aircraft to their aircraft. Their helicopters are extremely range limited, so if there's any kind of if there's any kind of disaster that's more than a certain distance offshore, uh, they're not going to be able to get there unless they either land on a boat and get gas, or unless we provide them air-to-air -air refueling. So they can fly longer, they can carry more. They can Be they weapons of war or peace, fuel is essential to the function of planes, helicopters, and ships. Luckily, some of the smartest minds on the planet have ensured these vehicles can complete their missions without having to stop. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.